Seven years was how long we had to wait for Formula 1 to come back to the famous Nürburgring in the Eiffel Mountains with its surprising and welcomed inclusion on the calendar not disappointing on its cold and wet return. The weather was in fact so poor on Friday that there was literally not one lap completed in practice one or two due to fog grounding the medical helicopter in case anyone needed an imminent visit to the hospital. So our first laps of the meeting were on a bitter Saturday morning that felt more like Christmas than the usual comfortable heat following the F1 rodeo across the planet. One hour of practice though cannot really give an indication as to the pecking order for the weekend so straight into qualifying we went with no big idea of what to expect. It turned out to be though the usual story in 2020. Mercedes front row, Max best of the rest, Renault, McLaren and Racing Point close together with the rest of the midfield not too far behind with Ferrari being kind enough to join the ship first in the midfield. The only real notable surprise was Valtteri Bottas' pole position and out-qualifying teammate Lewis Hamilton by a quarter of a second at a track where the Finn had only raced at once in a Formula 1 car. As for the rest of the grid, this is how they lined up. This time there would be no pre-race pit lane violations like in Russia as we headed into the race. And at its start on the front row Hamilton looked to have got the critically important start needed for easy victory before Valtteri decided to elevate to Bottas 4.0 in retaking the lead into turn 2. Sadly for Verstappen he couldn't capitalise on the squabbling Mercedes drivers whilst his teammate was busy destroying his tyres just three corners into the Grand Prix when scrambling to get back past Daniel Ricciardo. And once settled into its early race pattern it was clear the battles that would light up the race. The fight for victory between Bottas, Hamilton and Verstappen with Bottas at the time looking the clear favourite to win that with a tsunami of drivers from Ferrari, Renault, McLaren and Racing Point fighting for best of the rest. Leclerc's Ferrari up in 4th place though was so incredibly shit that he was lap by lap becoming more of a mobile chicane than a genuine threat with a train of cars starting to build behind. One of the cars in that train Alex Albon had to pit on lap 8 though due to that first lap lockup completely destroying his right front. His race would never recover. Ricardo would finally remove Leclerc of his fourth place with another great overtaking move whilst the battling Norris and Perez were intent on inflicting more Italian flavoured misery for Leclerc. Luckily Ferrari saved the Monegasque's blushes by getting a new set of boots on just before the return of Ferrari's greatest circus act. Quanto spinato? Spinella. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Once Vettel's fate was sealed, it was back to the front with a pass for the lead after a costly lockup at turn 1 from Bottas gifted Lewis the lead into turn 2. Valtteri was then forced to pit for mediums on lap 14 to try and redeem himself later on. The action wouldn't stop though as around that time Formula 1's granddad sent a driver who is a generation apart from him almost flipping out of the race whilst following the Italian truck of Vettel ahead. Kimi would pick up a 10 second penalty for this as Russell's Williams was deemed to have been parked in a dangerous enough place for the virtual safety car. That VSC would be a gift for Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen to get and stay ahead of Valtteri Bottas once they all made their pit stops as Hamilton and Verstappen made their stop under the VSC as that virtual safety car completely fucked over Valtteri Bottas. His fucking over by the racing gods was not over however as a couple laps later he was forced to retire after suffering a catastrophic loss of power. Bottas 3.0 is officially dead. Once that VSC came in though we had instant drama with Albon trying to pass Kvyat who went off track trying desperately to stay ahead. Albon would take the position but not without incredibly dopey driving as he completely swiped into the side of the Russian in a move 
Likely to go down well with Dr. Marco. A couple laps later though, it was time for another retirement. This time Esteban Ocon's Renault as his Renault car lost its hydraulics as he pulled into the pits for retirement. Meanwhile, back with Alex Albon, he was trying to pass the other Alpha Tauri of Gasly and continued to self-destruct his race with yet another lockup. And his comment of, they race me so hard, only went to sink his reputation further before he was pulled in for retirement. Let him soon be sacrificed to Helmut Marco for a reborn Pierre Gasly. There was more Renault powered problems occurring though this time with Lando Norris who was reporting a loss of power in third place having not pitted yet. This problem would slowly dismantle his race from then on with Sergio Perez picking up the pieces soon enough after both cars had pitted. Once Norris and Perez made their stop along with the other McLaren of science it was Daniel Ricciardo who was in pole position now for the podium. But could he hold on with a one stop strategy? If at this point though you're wondering where do Ferrari figure into this well they don't. They are instead trying their hardest to be the best of the shit that is Ferrari power teams in an epic fight for a few points. Quietly amongst that though was super sub for Lance Stroll Nico Hulkenberg in the racing point now entering a points paying position after starting dead last. His epic drive would be capped off with a wonderful points finish. But with about 15 laps until the end, Norris's McLaren finally decided to give up as he continued to fall back with his problem and pulled off to a place way, way off of the track. Surely this won't result in a... What the flying... <laughs> How the fuck is this a safety car? The car is way off the track and racing line and the chances of a car spinning and crashing where his car is is so incredibly small that it cannot be fucking measured. The FIA this season have found any reason possible to throw out a safety car and did it once again. And the funny thing is, it didn't even spice the race up. We would have had a more exciting finish without it but instead we got Gasly passing Leclerc for 6th and the other Ferrari trying desperately to pass a Williams. How incredibly fucking exciting that is. The race would end though with Lewis Hamilton equaling Michael Schumacher's all-time race win record of 91 with Verstappen second, and Ricardo getting Renault's first podium as a works team since 2011. Here are the rest of the results from the Nürburgring. Overall, it was a pretty good race weekend and in hindsight, I actually like only having one practice session before qualifying as the excitement of not really knowing the pecking order is much better than pretty much knowing what will happen. But I really hope this isn't the last race here for a while. If there is going to be a German Grand Prix, it should be here, not Hockenheim. Hockenheim is good, but it ain't as good as this place, so hopefully Liberty Media agree on this. Next up is Portimao in Portugal where we head into another unknown of what will happen. Hopefully it's like Mugello but without the red flags. I'll see you all with a race reaction stream a couple hours after the race, hopefully talking about another mental Grand Prix. But until then guys, it's been me, Chazer HD. goodbye.